Okay, so today we have Cherry Colored Funk by Cocteau Twins. And this is another one from Heaven or Las Vegas. And I say another one because the last time I reacted to them, which was in January, a long time ago now, I did Heaven or Las Vegas, the title track of the album. And I love that song, so I figured, why not come back to another track off this album? So here we go. Three minutes, 12 seconds. Let's get into it. Cherry Colored Funk. What a title. There it is, Cherry Colored Funk by Cocteau Twins. I gotta be honest, when I first saw the title, I thought of Cherry Flavored Pez, and then the whole scene from Stand By Me came to mind. Um, anyway, but um, but more, you know, beyond that, um, with this song, and I gotta say, <clears throat> I always say it, I feel like, not always, but uh, the last few times I've reacted to Cocteau Twins, because Cocteau Twins are one of the most unique, <laughs> I don't know why I jumped up, but they're one of the most unique, the most different bands I've ever come across, because, again, when I go into a band, when I go into a reaction, and like many other people who react or listen to music, I mean, my God, you always think about the words. You think about the lyrics and the meaning of those words and what the person's talking about and blah, blah, blah. But with Cocteau Twins, it's, I mean, Liz, there's words in there you can hear. I mean, uh, at one point I heard her say in everything or whatever, but at the same time, it's mostly gibberish. And, and that's one thing I could never wrap my head around for a while. And again, people in the comments would say, uh, listen, uh, you dummy, they're not, she's not actually saying stuff, you know, because I would see people interpret her, uh, what they thought they heard her say, and it's, it's kind of funny to say, but, um, when you put it like that, but yeah, people will interpret, and then when you search up this song, um, 
one of the first things I saw was uh, the lyrics. And again, somebody uh, um, did their what they uh, their interpretation again of what they what they think she says. And I did see another comment of someone say, "Well, obviously, obviously she wrote down words. I mean, there's there's a meaning here or somewhere." And uh, and I gotta say again, from what people have told me and what um, even uh, somebody who sent one of my reactions, I think to. Uh, uh, um, uh, a group, and I think Simon or Robin saw it, and they talked about it and talked about it again. And they even, I forget who it was now, Robin or Simon, but they said he's got to understand that again. Her, she's not actually saying words. And again, so when it's coming from the actual band, I mean, I yeah, it's just, I, I that's always a big point I want to talk about. I guess at the start of a reaction, where again, it's just um, it, her ethereal voice. And her insane vocal melody is what you're talking about here. Is what is what the focal point is. And um, and I don't mean to get on a soapbox, I guess, but I guess I did. But yeah, it's just uh, it, you talk about her voice here. I mean, <laughs> she. I loved how she was doing her own backup vocals. I guess you would say, and then lead vocals on top of that. There was layers to this, and it's just so beautiful. And it just tugs at your heartstrings. I I took a note of around like the two minute mark where. So her voice went to, I don't know, it's her voice kind of changed at one point and she kind of went a different way, whatever. And it was a bit sad. I don't know why all of a sudden it, it gave me a sad feeling. It tugged at my heartstrings even a little bit more. Um, because at one point, well, not at one point, but a few points, when she went to the higher register and she just, I, don't, I can't do a replication, obviously, but uh, I, it, there was a, she, she seems so innocent. I guess here with Liz Fraser, uh, there's an innocence to her voice and it just feels like, you know, obviously as well, it sounds like she could shatter glass, whatever, with her voice. But at the same time, it seems like you don't want to do Liz wrong at all. I mean, if you would feel terrible. And that's what I got here, too, because her voice is so delicate. And, and again, there's an innocence to it, I feel like. And and I, especially when it's over the lush, uh, I'd always like to use that word, the lush production here, the smooth production, I would say. And even, I say production, but obviously with, uh, with uh, Simon and Robin, you know, the guitar and the bass here. It's just... it. And I know when the band started out too, um, they they were kind of bare bones in a way. I know they had kind of a simplistic sound, uh, if I remember correctly. And uh, and this is you know I guess um, they were quite a few years into their careers at this point, into 1990 when this album came out. But there is a simplicity to this song, I would say, unless I'm you know dumb, I don't know. But there was kind of a low key feeling to this. Obviously, they know when to let Liz's voice shine. Um, there was no like solos in here or whatever. I feel like there was a drum machine, but looking at the personnel, it just shows, um, again, the three of them, but, uh, again, there was some kind of a drum machine or something I would say. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, the lush shimmering, uh, guitar work here and the bass work as well. It's just so beautiful. It's, it, it just works so well underneath Liz's voice. I mean, these guys knew Liz so well, and they still know her so well. I guess you would say, but yeah, they knew her voice so well, and they knew they knew when to come in, and they knew where to be. And it's just, it's just, it's, you know, great musicianship, obviously. And uh, and again, I talk about eth her ethereal voice, ethereal voice, however you say that word. And uh, it's just, I don't know, a quivering voice, dude. Just a quivering. That's really a good point to do. Like I was saying, there's a sadness at points. I felt like to her voice, I don't know, cherry colored funk is quite the title. I don't really know what we're talking about here with that, but um, I guess you could say it is funky at points. It was bouncy at points, I would say, with the uh, the, um, uh, the instruments, whatever. But uh, yeah, again, there's just, uh, there's so much going on here. Again, there's, I, like one of the top comments on this video is uh, somebody's, I think that they, uh, well, I guess I could just scroll down to look at it, but uh, talking about how it took them 30 years to understand Cocteau Twins. And I mean, I've only been listening to them or I've only known of them for a few years, maybe even a couple of years. I don't know how long it's been now. But uh, yeah, it's just, again, they make you think about uh, music differently. That's the whole friggin' thing, you know, they make you think about music differently. And and there's, uh, instead of looking for a meaning in the lyrics, there's a meaning in what the, in the sound and how sensual the sound is here. God damn. I mean, my, that's the whole point, I guess I'm trying to get across is how sensual this is and how, um, Vulnerable, it is too. Vulnerable, my God, I'm thinking of these words now, and uh, <laughs> I'm surprised at myself. But yeah, there's a vulnerable, there's a vulnerability, a vulnerability, my God, here, an innocence, um, a beautifulness, obviously too, and it's just, it's so delicate, and it's just, and it's just so pretty, and uh, and it just, it hits you so, it hits you so much harder, I guess, with just how this was mixed, and and, and the, I guess again with the lush guitar work and the lush bass work even as well, and. Uh, yeah, it's it's just it's so much to take in at one point, and uh, and again when you, 
<laughs> this being the opener, as I said, you know, you enter heaven automatically. I mean, again, heaven or Las Vegas. I might pick Las Vegas, but I have, you have no choice but to be in heaven here and to be in heaven for the whole freaking album. And you would think, too, it's just like, my God, what a, uh, what a, you know, a star studded track, if that's how I can put that. Um, how are how are they going to top this? And I know I haven't listened to anything else besides this and the title track, but the title track, which comes after the song, is great as well. I mean, it's fucking nuts too. Um, so it's so obviously they can top it a little bit, but uh, yeah, it's just I don't know. The Cocteau Twins are nuts, and I like them a lot. And <laughs> <laughs> and uh and again i there's not i mean this video is not going to be as long as my normal videos because there's no lyrics so i just kind of babble on about how what about what you feel here and that's what it's all about feeling and what you feel and what that feeling does to you and again like i said it tugs at, it tugged at my heartstrings and made me think about sadness and it made me think about love i guess you would say two at points i guess and uh and i love the t the title of it i mean my god cherry colored funk beautiful so anyway I guess that's all I gotta say. I mean, again, just these guys were so good. They can create such a such a sound. I was gonna say like a wall of sound, whatever. But just such a um, such a feeling, such a moment. Um, there's a word I'm trying to think of, but it's not coming to me. But they can just create such a such a vibe. I guess you might say. And you can. I know they took their influences from. Um, I would say like uh, post punk and stuff like that uh, from the late '70s and all that stuff. But again, you can hear today's in today's modern day dream pop shoegaze pop within itself whatever you want to say um you can hear uh, people who are influenced by cocktail twins i think of like mac demarco i look at a comment here on uh, on the video again where people talk about uh, beach house and just these bands that just i don't know, create such um such vibes themselves whatever it's such um um because again it's not all the words it's just all about the feeling you get from just the music and, uh, and that's just what comes to my big fat head so yeah, anyway, uh, and these guys obviously too were so important to the underground. Uh, that's another thing that comes to mind too. You, it can't be understated how important these guys were. And again, I see that this album was ranked um, uh, in the, I forget what number it was, but I, I'm not going to look now, I guess. But it was ranked in Rolling Stones, the 500 greatest albums of all time. It was ranked somewhere in there. So, uh, and just from two songs, I can see why. Uh, again, whenever you're in a bad mood or even a good mood, I mean, I can imagine listening to this album and just, again, your your fears or, or your happiness, whatever it is, can continue on. But uh, things just slip away and uh, and you just get lost in the music. And that's the whole point. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm babbling on too much now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking, subscribing, commenting, staying like this. I don't know. My back's going nuts on me. My God, I guess uh, working too hard. My God. But anyway, thanks for everything. All the support. Um, thanks to Liz, <laughs> and Simon, and Robin again for another great experience. And uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon.